Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. An Amber Alert for two 14-day-old twins comes to the best possible conclusion. The newborns are safely back with their parents, but tonight there are so many more questions and answers as to what happened late last night in Livonia. Local 4 was the first outlet to confirm the news this morning. A push alert on the Click on Detroit app at 10.31 a.m. Newborn twins who went missing in Livonia have been found. And tonight, the father of those twins speaking to Local 4 as he tends to his children inside the hospital. Good to have you with us here at 5. I'm Devin Skillier. I'm Kimberly Gill. While Montana and Matthew Bridges are back home safely, there are a whole lot of questions about what happened last night after they were taken from the Quality Inn in Livonia and then dropped off at the night precinct hours later on Detroit's east side. Sean Lay is live tonight and Sean there really so much to sort out here. Well, Kimberly, Devin, we all got the alert to our phones, right? It's jarring to get the Amber Alert. We're all hoping for the best. Now flip the script there. Imagine you're the parents and we just spoke to the father, the mother of the twins right next to him, clutching their twins inside Children's Hospital. They're absolutely fine. And the dad getting the strength to tell me exactly what happened here, how they met people on a mom's Facebook group offering them help. He says that led to their abduction and that Amber Alert. Listen closely to dad. Alvin, how's, how's your boys, twins? How are they? They doing good. Man. Can, I, can I see them? They just got their x-rays and all their scans. They look great. Yeah, everything healthy. They want to harm or nothing. I just spoke with Calvin Bridges as he held one of his twins inside Children's Hospital this afternoon. The twins' mom holding tight onto that other twin boy. Both twins abducted from their room at the Quality Inn in Livonia just after 10 last night. Two women coming to their room offering gift cards, diapers, wipes to help the couple. Instead, the women abducted the twins, sparking an amber alert. There were some females that, uh, may, that be on the page acting like they helping parents with their kids. So they, uh, my girlfriend, she went looking on, uh, on Black Mom's page. Yeah. And they reached out for her saying they can help her and they can find her somewhere to stay. They can do this for the kids and do that for the kids. So they were supposed to be uh, coming to drop her off some gift cards for the kids. Right. And they, uh, they ended up just taking the kids after she went downstairs to get something to drink. Unbelievable. At 9.30 this morning, someone walked those abducted newborns into the Detroit Police 9th Precinct on the city's east side. Only local four cameras were behind the precinct to watch Livonia police take a man and woman into custody. The twins' father says it all stems from people reaching out to them on Facebook, offering help, and then taking their twin boys once they arrived, saying they were there to help. Why would they do that? I don't know. That's that's what they do. I guess abduct kids. I don't know. They go to they help try to help they try to help mommies out, and I guess that's what they do. They abduct kids. Back here live, you have to listen closely to dad there. You can hear the relief in his voice. We're putting together a timeline all this. Sat, so I talked to the mom of the mom, the grandmother here, and she confirms all of this, saying her daughter called her a couple of days ago, saying people are offering them help on Facebook. And she says, it sounds legit, go for it. Saturday was supposed to be some sort of meeting, but there was trouble at the family home. They didn't know it was the Facebook people there at the home. So they went to the quality and they say, to seek safety and they were reached out again from the people on Facebook saying we have gift cards for you. They showed up and then apparently took those babies. We just saw the babies released from the hospital here into mom and dad's arms into car carriers and trucks. Dad gives me a big thumbs up. That's the bottom line here. Those twins are fine, checked out completely. They're with mom and dad right now tonight. What an ordeal for them. Back to you. The best possible news we can have that those babies are OK today. Sean, we appreciate your report. All right, now to new information we're learning tonight into the shooting death of an eight year old on Detroit's west side. This happened about 1030 Saturday night on Ward Street between Midland and Pilgrim. Police say the child found an unsecured gun in the house. Victor Williams live on this story and Victor police have made an arrest. Yeah, that's right. We'll get to that in just a second, but it's just so sad that this continues to happen. This time it's an eight year old that's victimized on Detroit's west side, but one man tried everything he could to help. People should learn that you know, this happens all the time and we're still doing it. It's just sick. Another life lost all because of what appears to be another case of neglect. From my understanding, the the man and woman were upstairs. They went to bed and the gun was in a uh, book bag 
next to the couch. One little boy said he was playing his tablet. He turned and looked and the boy had the gun towards his face and uh, then he shot. Police say the fatal shot was fired around 1030 on Saturday. That's when they got the call at a home on Ward Street. It's there an eight-year-old lost his life after getting a hold of an unsecured weapon. This neighbor who did not want to go on camera stopped everything in an effort to save his life. And I called 911. They were advising him to see if he had a pulse. He had a pulse. Tilted his head so he can keep his airway clear. Neighbor stays over there. She came. She said, we'll take him. So she and we put the boy in the car and the mom and, and her and she took him to the hospital. The matter remains under investigation, but some insist more effort could have been made on multiple ends. The thing that bothered me, that's said, while she was screaming, he's running around looking like, where are the keys, where are the keys, not tending to her and the child. The boy was taken to the hospital privately where unfortunately he passed away. Chief White says it's like the same story over again. How many times do we have to be here with this, with these, with these babies and these guns and these, you know, everybody's tougher with a gun, but it comes with a tremendous amount of responsibility. In the meantime, it's a scene that's going to be very hard to forget. If you, to hear her scream, you knew something was bad. I mean, she was just blood curling, she was shrieking. Now, the gun that was used was identified as an illegal weapon, so one arrest was made, but no charges have been filed just yet. Of course, once we receive that information, of course, we'll keep everyone posted. Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor. All right, Bernie's here now uh, following some big news coming out of Ann Arbor. Wolverine's going to be starting without uh, Jim Harbaugh on the sidelines, sounds like here. No, they're going to be. They're, they're, they are, they are going, going to. to be, yeah. Okay, this they're, is, it's... They're going to be, not the NCAA, but they're doing right. the first three games he's going to miss, which are the, as you I said, you're not going to be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can it you is... back up the tape? We're going to rehearse this again. <laughs> this is a move by Michigan to try and appease the NCAA since they said last week there would be no discipline for Harbaugh until 2024. Today, Michigan said Harbaugh would be suspended for the first three games of this coming season for not being truthful with NCAA investigators on recruiting violations. The suspension was imposed by the Michigan Athletic Department. We've got highlights of Harbaugh. He'll be back in time for the Rutgers game, but we'll miss East Carolina, UNLV, and Bowling Green. This move has worked in the past for other schools, and there are times the NCAA looks favorably upon a self-imposed three-game suspension. NCAA, you'll remember, wanted four games, but put that penalty aside until next year. So again, he will not be on the sidelines for those first three games. Just listen to Kimberly. Just Don't listen to anything. Yeah, right. yeah, that's right. Exactly. Can't wait till you're back from vacation. Yeah. It'll be great. Exactly what I was saying. Exactly. We'll see, see you a little bit. All right, questions tonight surrounding a Wayne County judge's decision to not recuse herself in a murder trial. It came after the jury's verdict uh, when Judge Chandra Baker Robinson revealed she was related to the victim. Will Jones is live in the newsroom tonight. So, Will, this is a pretty surprising admission, especially at the end of the trial. Kimberly, Judge Shonja Baker Robinson says she did not know the connection until after the case was in the hands of the jury. She says the victim is a distant relative of her husband and they didn't know the victim and they don't know his family. Thank you for not giving me a fair trial. A familial connection causing controversy in this Wayne County courtroom. Robinson is a very common name and there is no way that I would think just because somebody's last name is Robinson that they were uh, related to me. Attorneys representing Bennett and Stephen Pruitt filed a motion to disqualify Judge Chandra Baker Robinson from their first degree homicide case and to issue a new trial after the judge learned that the victim, Devon Robinson, is related to her through her husband. This information coming after the case was already turned over to a jury. As I indicated, I don't know that family and neither does my husband. Baker Robinson denied their motion. The court is going to indicate it will not be recusing itself because the only thing I'm at this point is sentencing. And I have no discretion in the sentencing because the jury found both defendants guilty of first degree murder, which is life without the possibility of a parole. But Bennett's attorney says while the jury was deliberating, Baker Robinson responded to a substantial juror question without disclosing at the time her connection to the victim. We wanted a fair shake from the beginning. And, um, you know, I kind of think that it's important for people to be able to have faith in the neutrality, the impartiality uh, of our judicial system. 
The Wayne County Prosecutor's Office saying recusal is in the judge's discretion in this case. It's not mandatory. The spokesperson says recusal is only required with a third degree relation. And Kimberly, they say this is considered a six degree relation. So, so, Will, what's next for the defense? Do we know? Kimberly, she hopes the chief justice or chief judge, I should say, gets involved. If that doesn't happen, she may take it to the appellate yeah. court. Okay. We know you'll continue to follow it. Will, we appreciate it. Let's head now to Southern California where Tropical Storm Hillary has moved through the area and parts of Nevada packing torrential rains that turn roads uh, into rivers. It's the first tropical storm to hit Southern California in 84 years. Jay Gray in Santa Clarita tonight where the rains have even torn the roads apart. Jay. Southern California soaked and shaken during 24 hours of at times severe weather. This is an unusual uh, and strong uh, storm event with heavy rains and strong winds. At one point, the state's Office of Emergency Services issuing tropical storm, earthquake, and tornado warnings all within an hour of each other. Tropical storm Hillary dumping rain from San Diego through Los Angeles. Neighborhoods overrun by the water, roads swamped, some swept away. Gusting winds, uprooting trees and pulling power lines to the ground. Saturated hillsides giving way, rock and mudslides spilling onto highways. And in the middle of it all, a 5.1 magnitude earthquake. The Los Angeles Fire Department so far has reported no damage or injuries in the city resulting from the earthquake. In fact, through all of the chaos, officials say there have been no significant injuries, no catastrophic damage, but they warn. There is still potential, as we know, for flooding, debris flow, and other significant storm-related incidents. Urging those in the strike zone to remain cautious for the next few days. Jay Gray, Local 4.